I think the greatest challenge of stem cell research is to take a stem cell that can become anything in your body and make it become one single cell type in large number, high purity. My recent research is really targeting the development of a treatment for spinal muscular atrophy, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and chronic spinal cord injury. All three injury and disease types rolled into one because all three are characterized by the loss of motor neurons, those cells that control all the moving parts in your body from your um, the movement of your internal organs to your arms, eyes, blinking, mouth, everything. Now, those diseases have a deficit of motor neurons, so we've identified a therapeutic target, motor neurons. The path to the clinic really begins with preclinical efficacy work. Do your stem cells actually effectively treat an animal model of human disease? So we have to pick that animal model, find an animal model or develop an animal model that mirrors in some way the human condition. We can never do that. Never ever has there been an animal model that perfectly reflects the human condition of a disease state. So all of our models are imperfect, which means we have to use two or three. So once we find the two or three that are closest to the human condition, then we transplant our cells in there and um, decide on dosing, on timing, the quantity of volume that we're putting into the disease state. In addition, we've got to determine what we're going to look for. What are the outcome measures? Are we going to look for leg function after spinal cord injury? Or are we going to look for bladder function, bowel function, sexual function, motor control, sensory control, any portion thereof? The point here is that we don't want to miss an effect. So we have to have multiple outcome measures. We often have to design those outcome measures, talk to the field, and pick methods that others can follow and others can replicate so that one laboratory can back up the work of another. After we've got this thing working, we then have to show that it's safe. So again, we have to pick the right animal models to look for safety. Do these cells cause tumors? Do they cause pain? We recently designed a safety study that contained some 160 outcome measures. 160 analyses of a single rat, 60 to 80 rats in each group. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of students. It's a lot of weekends. It's a lot of birthdays. It's a lot of time to determine if these things are safe, if they're working. And now in spinal muscular atrophy, some very smart people have developed a, a mouse model of that disease, but it dies within 14 days of birth. That's not so bad if you're transplanting mouse motor neurons into a mouse because everything moves fast in a mouse. They live and die within two years. But to transplant our human cells into the mouse, we have human motor neurons that take months to grow from the spinal cord to their targets, yet we only have two weeks to test their function in this animal model, a very appropriate animal model for this clinical disease. So you see, every model is flawed. It means that we need a multiplicity of approaches. Sometimes we have to develop those animal models. And then we need other laboratories to be able to replicate our work using those very same models. So there has to be a, a continuity across labs. Can stem cell technologies reasonably be applied to the human condition in the foreseeable future? Well, it was only 1998 where that human embryonic stem cells were first isolated. In a few short years thereafter, methods of differentiating them became known. Just two years ago, we had our first high purity derivation from human embryonic stem cells done in a clinically viable manner in my laboratory here at UCI. Now we're starting to see the derivation of multiple high purity human cell populations. Heart cells have been made. Um, pancreatic islet cells have been made. Uh, oligodendrocytes, motor neurons, retinal tissue. We're starting to see the derivation of useful products and their application to animals. So now what the field is trying to do is figure out how we design the preclinical work. What do we have to do by way of efficacy and safety in order to get these into humans? But we have developed the technologies. That's very, very impressive in a few short years. So stem cell technologies will be applied in the very near future to human conditions. It's no doubt.